everyone and welcome back to Piano Secrets. In this video I'm going to be teaching you how to practice Chopin's Etude Opus 25 number 1 in A flat major. The A flat major scale is like this. Chopin is going to base all this etude on that scale and he's going to start harmonizing melodies within the scale. The melody goes like this Okay, that's the first thing you should know. Then afterwards, you have to figure out the first chord. For the E, he puts an A-flat chord, which is a bit like this, the chord number one. Now, he only, he doesn't just do that, but add an E-flat here. And also, he extended to the left hand. So all this note. This reminds me a little bit of the other etude. The only thing now is he's going to combine it in a different way. Instead of going towards the melody, he's going to start on the melody, make a background and go back to the melody. So he's going to do for the left hand, going up but now going down also. That's it for it. The right hand is going to have a different pattern, which will be this. So we're going up on one of them, but he's dividing the first triplet in this way. So that means we have a rotation here, rotation, rotation, we get to the flat and all the way up. That's for the whole etude like this. Okay, so that's it. So if we want to start practicing this in A flat, we'll start from the beginning. And we have the first arpeggio. The key thing is that to create tension, he can't just stay there forever. So he's going to go to an F and come back to E flat and release here. So we'll do that. That's what we have. Now for the next uh, part of the melody, most of the tension is going to come from a different chord. From A flat, we could go to the fifth tone, which it would be E flat. And we get this chord, E flat 7. So if we bring it down, we have this. He puts an A flat, and we end up with this left hand but also right hand like that some of them the notes are left out like G and he does the same pattern up and down and a little pattern on the here always the same movement rotating back and then throwing it all the way up and then he put the two things together, which is one of the difficulties too, to play their pages at the same time and even so. And then here we get to the I flat again, from the beginning. It's very important that when the melody goes up, you also increase the value on those notes. So if you are here, get to the B flat, a strange sound there which is uh, augmented again another device to create tensions he's going A flat he adds an F back to E flat A flat then E flat 7 and A flat then from A flat, he's going to do an augmented chord to go to D flat. That's very important. Always be aware of the augmented chord. 
because they create tension and then the release it tells you a lot about how to play it so if I start on A flat I will play light the F will create tension release I go to the F flat 7 tension again loud and release again augmented E flat now back to piano. So then here we have the same melody. You could give it the color that you want. Always remember if you have a stretch, come back. Maybe I do the movements very slow here. See? I go in, up. Melody. Always the same pattern. Back to piano. Uh, the way I don't consider, I could voice this in different way. I could put some bass in the middle of it, a little bit lighter, and then a little bit more color on the top. The tune is going to change a little bit, and we're going to have some inside melody. So we have the same pattern here, let's say, but we're going to have to bring. <laughs> It's very important we bring the G, but also the inside voice that we have. And uh, this over a G chord. It creates a very beautiful contrast, and we have. At least try to bring those up. So it's always this and also below. I show you. Top and top and inside. After this, it's gonna have uh, how to solve three against two, and we have this. So we have here two against these three. So the trick is to play together, and this C here on the left hand in between. I do it slow, you can pick it up uh, very quickly if you do it, if you take your time so, together. So that's how you solve the three against two. Not only we have the melody on the right hand now, but we also will have it for this section on the left hand. So here we have, so you will have to practice, this could be a cello or a singer. It's important you bring that up. Now here, all it's going to do is change to a C major. The pattern continues to be the same and by C major chord. Some people like to bring the thumb also. And the 
attitude is getting to a climax now and it started uh, tranquilo it has some two against three again and back to a flat high note a flat again, top note, same pattern, and then arpeggio. Now this always rotating. Remember that the left hand always on the left hand would rotate, go back. And same for right hand, rotate. Same rotation. We have at the end the arpeggio again, a tradition from the Romanticism to, they used to say that the arpeggio at the end of the pieces used to save the artist from agony. So that's why at the end we have the symbolic arpe arpeggio to end the song. And so many other pieces by Chopin and Franz Liszt or any of, of them, they have an arpeggio at the end when they end the song. Some people say, how do you practice this? I think the most beneficial will be rhythm slow. So, slow and fast, or fast and slow, fast. And then triplet. Or the whole thing. This way you could have the holitude uh, in no time. I hope this video was helpful and if you enjoyed subscribe. If you are already a subscriber I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.